going back to the studio then when you're, you're doing your bass lines and stuff like that, are you using the, the instruments and the synths inside Logic or are you using... Um, for, for bass lines I predominantly use um, Fab Filter 2. Mm -hmm. yeah, I used to use Fab Filter 1 but Fab Filter 2 I reckon is absolutely incredible. Just the sounds are just a really really warm and I just love that little um are you guys all aware of it where you can just like put your mouse and draw the draw the sounds pretty much yep. I just love that just what the crazy things you can come up with um and I also find fab, the fab filter stuff even one sits in the mix really really well that you you, you don't have to do much work to it mm -hmm. Hardly any compression, if if need be, EQing. It just sits really, really well in the mix. Yeah. Whereas another favourite of mine is Vanguard. It's an absolute prick to work <laughs> into the mix. I find it's uh, well with bass sounds anyway. Just the sounds are just the bottom ends is boomy and horrible, and you can just spend hours just trying to to make, make it hate. sit. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, I'd like to use Massive more, but my computer won't handle it. <laughs> um, we'll start an online petition or something. Yeah, that. and it's kind of been done to death now. <laughs> by the time I probably get around to using it, yeah. Yeah, it's been absolutely be milked by the, dub, uh, yeah, the dubstep and the drum and bass guys. Yeah, yeah. Of, people who are reporting that Massive crashes their BAWs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not the only one. Yeah, no, yeah. No. Good, yeah, it's... Uh, and that's like... Actually, crashing Ableton 8. Oh, really? Lord. Wow. <laughs> so, it's got nothing to do with age. It's just... And I really like um, Predator as well. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. I just find, again, the sounds, they sit in the mix really easily and they're just really, really fat and warm sounding. Mm. Yeah. And the other one, which is really fidgety, uses the um, G Force Oddity. Oh, uh, yeah. I really like that, but. Uh, I need to set up a controller with it, but there's just so many little sliders now. Just my hand just feels crippled using it because I don't really use controllers. <laughs> well, no, that was the other thing. I, well, I, I know there was a pile of stuff in a, in your cupboard when I came around visit, which is now sitting in the in my studio and in the hallway. So yeah. it spills out. Um, do you feel an urge to go back to use that, or you're quite happy and? Occasionally, I will. I've got a um, a K station. Yeah. And I'll drag that out and and have a fiddle around. I think it's just the sheer. It's just easier just to use the stuff mm. on the computer, and and then you can kind of bounce it down, or if you want to make changes. And yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't really have an urge to use it as much as I think in the back of my mind. I know if I did, I could probably get better results. Mm. When I look back at a lot of early recordings and. And a lot of it was done on outboard gear. I, you can definitely hear the richness yeah. in in the um, in the synths as opposed to the plugins. But then the plugins have got better recently. Mm. I think I'm like I'm absolutely blown away by by that fab, fab filter thing yep. recently. It's uh, in the Rob uh, Papin stuff as well. It's I think a big thing as well, and I find it as well for studios with any hardware, is if you can have the physically the space to have it plugged in and ready yeah. to go at any single moment, that's when you'll use it. But, but if but, you but have then, to plug it in or you have to do anything yeah, to it, it's yeah. so much easier to you know to bring up a VST and it, it's a way you're running. But then you know you've seen the state of some of my drum machines. And things, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I started restoring them and then thought, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're. Uh, in dire need of some love. <laughs> um, so in the in the studio for you, I guess it, I guess it gets down to your sound. Is there particular things you're doing regularly with EQs or with compression or particular techniques that sort of kind of lean towards your sound or what you're creating or? Ooh. For example, you know, I mean, I know I, I will high pass a lot of my stuff just instinctively now on my tracks, which is probably what leans a bit towards the, the kind of clinical sound or the clean sound yeah. that I get, sharp sound. Um, is there anything you just kind of, when you start a project, you just know you're going to do that, that, and that, and that? Or is it pretty much fresh each time? Yeah, no, it well, one of the things I do do is just put an EQ on everything. Yeah. 
and then just kind of work out where the low pass is and that's just like listening to it and then I pretty much just bypass everything high pass it at 16 yeah kind of of what uh, Robert Babbage was saying as soon as I found out about that mm. those are instinctive things I just do um are you mixing into a compressor or you... Yep, um, and I've tried tons of compressors and the most recent one is that uh, the Cytomic one, the glue compressor. It's um, actually dead... Yeah, 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 yeah dead, I think dead... Oh, yeah, okay. Dead Mouse was behind um, or involved with, with the creation is of it. that one ages ago, there was a, they alluded to one on a YouTube yeah, channel, yeah. some and software that was coming yeah, out. Yeah, and it's just been released, yeah. and I think, I'm absolutely loving it. It's got a real, it's got inc- the fastest attacks and releases yeah. of any compressor I've, I've ever seen. And... Have you tried the rocket? Sorry? Have you tried the rocket? Is so, still up? No. Uh, it's like there, super, super, super fast. Mm. Yeah. Okay, what's it called? The Rocket? The Rocket, yeah. Okay. Still well audio. Still well audio, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice... nice like uh, the, the attack goes down to five microseconds. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know that the attack on this is just incredible, <laughs> eh? It's, um, yeah. Pre-attack. Pre-attack. Pre-attack, yeah. <laughs> I sense the sound. <laughs> like, <laughs> because... <laughs> yeah, I have to remember that. Prior to that, I was using the UAD... SSL bus compressor, yep. which this one's kind of modelled on it a bit, I think. Uh, okay. But I actually prefer the results of, 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 of the glue. That's what's kind of cool, the glue. Um, to the SSL one, which is, um, you know, that's a pretty bold statement, I think. Mm. And prior to that, I had been using, at times I just used the damn Logic. I find the Logic compressor still pretty damn good, actually. Mm. And the UAD bus compressor as well. But I tend to only mix in just a little bit. Just you know, the gain reduction stay more wouldn't hit more than three. Yeah. So these days you're leaving it for the mastering engineer. No. To get loud, or you're doing? Because um, you'll you'll probably be wanting to play stuff out before you necessarily. Yeah. Set it off w- in the what I then do is just bounce it down as one file, and then I do my own uh, cheap and nasty master. Yeah. And I, I'll just play around with stuff. You know, I'll put a multi band on it and. Um, and, and just just um, play around and but I find the best limiter is definitely the UAD one I've found mm. holds the bottom end because I've got the all the I've had all the wave stuff I keep me I might buy the that Vox and Go one because mm. everyone keeps raving about how good elephant. that elephant eh? elephant yeah, yeah yeah and but I've just found that the waves just really really crush the bottom end up and. The UAD really, really kept it nice and round. Mm. That's precision limiter. That's the one. Yep, yep, the precision. Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, you, you, mastering just has to get left to the professionals. It's, mm. it's as simple as that. It's. Yeah. 